What's the right amount of volume to build the most amount of muscle? Watch this. Our next caller is Stephen from North Carolina. Stephen, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Congratulations on all your hard work. Uh, it's really paying off, helping a lot of people, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and read this question off because I don't want to sound like a blabbering idiot, but it mainly revolves around uh, muscle and strength and hypertrophy and the amount of volume that's prescribed in max anabolic. Um, so you hear all these other guys like Lane Norton and Brad Schoenfeld and Mike Isertel preach for days and days about how volume is the key for size and strength gains. And they all seem to talk about around a 15 to 20 um, sets per week for any given muscle. Um, but when I'm doing MAPS anabolic, it seems like the most volume you're ever doing for any one body part in particular is 12 sets. And that's assuming that you're doing three days a week. Um, and then in some phases, like phase one, it only has like four sets of pull-ups for the lats. But um, anyways, I ran MAPS anabolic as written about a year or so back and didn't really see any significant strength gains or size gains. Um, caveat is I was either at maintenance for most of the time or even cutting towards the end of it. So I'm not sure if that has something to do with it. Um, with all that being said, though, I've been lifting and eating really well for over a year now, and I haven't really seen any size or strength gains significantly, um, doing any sort of program. So I've kind of come to the conclusion that I probably need to do some sort of legitimate slow and steady bulk in order to gain strength and size at this point. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm a little worried that, um, doing so with a program like MAPS Anabolic, I won't have enough volume. And that just worries me. I don't want to get fat <laughs> uh, on my first time really trying to bulk. Okay. All right. So there's a couple of things you added in the question that you wrote into. Do you mind if I go through them? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So you said you you realize you have a little bit of body dysmorphia? Yeah, potentially. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now that, that can make um, that can make being objective a little bit challenging. Right. Okay. Now you mentioned not a lot of strength gains, but you were also cutting your calories. That's common. It's really hard to make strength gains when your calories are low. Um, especially so, an experienced lifter. Yeah, especially experienced. As far as volume is concerned, okay, here, here's the deal with, with volume. And here's the challenge that I have with the science-based uh, fitness communicators. Although they're far better than the typical fitness influencer, they are all about the data and they tend to miss out the context of individual variants because they themselves often don't train lots of everyday people. Or if they do train people, there's a bit of a bias because they'll train just bodybuilders or, or high you know, performing athletes. Volume definitely contributes to hypertrophy, but it's got to be the right volume. What does that mean? Well, it's very different from person to person. So that 15 to 20 sets per week, that's true for a lot of people. It's not true for everybody. For, for a lot of people, that's too much volume. And the context that you have to look at is your lifestyle, the stress that you have, your diet, your sleep, and of course, your genetics all play a role. And also... Let's say you did follow a program that, let's say, was at 18 sets per week per body part, and you were doing great, and you did that for years. Sometimes dropping volume gets you better gains when you're stuck to something for so long. And the same is, can be true in the opposite, where you maybe do low volume and then increase the volume. Um, intensity and frequency and all that stuff, these all play a role. And also, don't forget with MAPS Anabolic, there's trigger sessions. So trigger sessions mm -hmm. are a way to add lots of extra volume. You could do up to three of those a day on your off days. So, you know, essentially what I'm saying is this. There's a lot of individual variants. You're going to have to play with things a little, a little while. But I'm going to be quite honest with you. The vast majority of people that I've worked with, 15 sets is around the top. Uh, uh, per week, per body part, what most people can can take. The people that handle more than that okay. tend to be more advanced with better athletic or muscle building uh, genetics. Most people are anywhere between nine to twelve sets, in my experience. And again, the context being a normal life and maybe some stress and not everything else being totally perfect. But the other part okay. I want to focus on is the body dysmorphia side. That's going to make being objective really hard. And I know you're worried about gaining uh, lots of body fat, um, that's going to make it real hard for you to move in the bulk, you know, like to gain weight because you're going to gain a little bit of body fat when you're gaining some muscle. You're not going to gain a lot, but you're going to gain a little bit of body fat. So the two options I would have for you are, if you you know, in your question you said here, you're about 13% body fat. You could either cut down to 10% and then go on a bulk or go on a bulk now and tell yourself that you won't allow yourself to get above 15%. Uh, body fat or something like that. And then measure strength and make that the, you know, the, the, the main, and, and the reason why I like strength is because body dysmorphia doesn't, 
doesn't really affect strength. You either get stronger or you don't. And you could look in the mirror and judge yourself all you want, but if the weight's going up, then you know you're doing at least most things right. So uh, that's that's those are the two directions I would say uh, I would recommend you go. So I you know I have a few things to contribute to this. One, um, I actually do agree with Lane and Greg and Schoenfeld who you're talking about, like uh, as far as volume. Um, if you've listened to the show long enough, you've heard me talk about when I competed. One of the single most important things that I tracked uh, to make sure that I was progressing show over show was a uh, volume and how I manipulated that. So, but there's a piece that's missing in this conversation that if also, if you've been listening for a long time, you've heard me say many times, which is my goal is always to do the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. So what I don't like about the messaging that Lane is saying and Greg and these guys is we're all assuming that everybody is at the same place, like what Sal is alluding to. And what I have found in my experience is most people um, respond very well to less. Very few people are consistently training day in, day out, months in, months out, year in, year out. Yeah, with good diet, good sleep. Right. Yeah. And so by me, when I start these people off, I actually want to do as little as possible to get them to start to see some sort of change. That way, I have lots of room to increase volume over time. So when I first started to get ready for competing, so I competed for two years consistently. I, I got ready a year before that. So three years of being very, very focused on building, right? And that first year, my routine looked very similar to anabolic. And it was a very slow process of just trying to build my metabolism up, get stronger, pack on some muscle. And what's cool is if you're following MAPS consecutively, we wrote them in order with purpose, right? So it goes MAPS anabolic, maps performance maps aesthetic and then you would move to something like split you know for somebody who's more body body part focused like a competitor and all of those we scale volume in it for you so anabolic is designed to be the the lesser volume program in comparison to performance aesthetic and then split and then the pinnacle would be ped so yeah you do want to add volume if you want to keep ice so what they're saying is not not true, but the starting point is really important. And finding that for uh, a client is important that you don't go right to the yeah. end. If you try, if I tried to start when the, my journey, if I started in PED type of volume, I might've seen great results for the first month or two because of how much volume's in it, but then I would have nowhere to go yeah. and scale. And I would even argue you would have overtrained. Right? I would have, yeah. I would have. And, and to add to this, Stephen, too, look, look, let's just think about, let's think this out for a second. Okay, adding volume year after year is the way that you get your body to continue to change. Okay, that obviously there's some there's a bit of a flaw there because what are you going to do five in five years or 10 years into training? 85 yeah. sets per week per yeah. body part? It's not always that way. So you can get up to a certain volume. You could back down on the volume, increase the intensity, change the exercise, all of a sudden get mm -hmm. well, great this, results this is well. What it, this is what it looked like for me. It went anabolic, performance, aesthetic, split, PED for two shows, back to anabolic. Yeah. Reset myself again. Like it's and get what's awesome is after I trained that long, that consistently, scaled volume over time. Man, when I got back to anabolic and gave myself that adequate rest and brought the volume down, I got really strong. Yeah. So you know the, that that's the the one thing I don't like about when guys pre, you know preach this message all the time. It's like we're all assuming that you know the millions of people we're all talking to are in the exact same place. And again, I'll, I'll always hammer this home. The goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change so I have more tools in my tool belt or toolbox to manipulate later on. And yes, adding volume and manipulating volume is one of the single most important things to adding and building size over time. But where you start is so important. Yeah, and then the, la the last thing I want to say is related to the comment about anabolic. 100% the reason why you didn't see much from that is because you're in a maintenance to a deficit. On a program where it's about building your metabolism and building strength, running in a maintenance or or in a deficit yeah, you gotta feed the body yeah is is i mean the fact that you just maintained would be a success so by running that in a bulk um or at least maintenance surplus is going to be where you want to be in order to see some strength gains in muscle muscle building did, did you do the trigger sessions religiously i did yeah three I a did. day yeah and sorry you did three a day on your off days no i did one a day typically okay. do three a day Mm -hmm. A huge okay. difference, huge difference if you do three a day versus one a day. And make sure you're just okay. you're just trying to get a pump. That's all you're trying to do. 
Gotcha. The other um, kind of question I had with regards to that is it, that just seems to be kind of conflicting with the, you know, when you want to get better at a lift, do it more frequently um, advice that you guys often give. That's right. Um, so I'm wondering how you would incorporate the more frequency into like random lifts like the All right, so either pull ups or bench press, like just do a couple sets at like 70% for like half as many reps as you can do. Yeah. Think like of, on the trigger session days. You think of, of it deal. this way. Think of it this way, right? So if you have, you have volume and frequency and intensity. Okay. So the more you train, the more often you train, the longer you train, the less you can train intensely. So if you want to practice a lift every single day, you're, you're going to maybe have one day where it's decent intensity. The rest of the time, it's, it's literally practice. Yeah, but don't forget, Sal, this, this if again, going back to what I said, uh, right now, uh, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm sticking to the goal is to build and put muscle and size and strength on right now. Um, you know, getting good at a lift, okay, yes, that, that matters, but we're talking about the, vol the conversation right now is about volume and, and properly scaling that. And right now, I want to follow MAPS Anabolic to a T because in performance, you're going to get more volume and practice. And in aesthetic, you're going to get even more volume and practice. And so I, I think the message for me is that, or for you, for me, is that follow it to a T, follow up the right program right after it, let the let us do the programming for you where we scale the volume in and trust the process and do it in a, a maintenance to bulk so you can actually build while you do it. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, guys. Right. Thanks for calling Appreciate in. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steven. All right. Take care. You know, I want to say this about studies because you are gonna you can pull up lots of studies on exercise. Like how what's the best rep range? What are the best set, you know, range, total volume, and intensity? And there's a couple things that you want to consider when you look at studies. One is that studies are typically 12 to 16 weeks long. So whatever works best in a 12 to 16-week period doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to work best long term. The body does tend to lose its, I guess, the the how it adapts or reacts to a stimulus once it's used to that stimulus. So changing things up makes a big difference. And then here's the other part that's really important. If you read the studies, and nobody ever does this, look at the participants. It's almost always 10 to 15 college-aged males. Yep. Okay, So let's, look, let's think of the context here. They're young men, so they have typically good testosterone levels. They're probably prime age to build recover. They probably don't have a lot of stress. They're in college. They have enough time to obviously enroll in a study. They don't have kids. They're not, you know, worried about all that stuff. So that context mm. matters. So 15 to 20 sets for college aged males in a 12 week period, that may be true for a majority of those people. If you're a 35 year old or 45 year old male, or you're a guy with lots of stress or you know, you're a woman or whatever, like it, it changes things quite a bit. And like I said, if I took all the clients that I trained and I considered all of them, uh, 15 to 20 sets is too much for most people. It's usually about nine to 12 is what I would get out of consistent clients uh, to be optimal. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.